Okay. When they bring up these asset classes, I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to mind, be as hilarious as you want with it, or okay. as, be as, all right, so when someone says that you're investing in the stock market, right. what is that, what comes to mind? I just feel panic, and I, I, I freak out, because uh, this is all beyond me. <laughs> so I just go, oh, whatever, you do it. So like, if a guy comes up and he goes, I, I got a great opportunity, you got to invest in this, I'd be like, all right, all right. You could you could totally ruin my life with some bullshit investment opportunity. I would fall for that in a second, and I have. What is it about the stock market that's intimidating? Is it the fact that it's bulls, bears, ups, down, left, right, green, red? What is it that's intimidating? I, I think it's that you have no control over it. It changes every day. Even the idea of stock, like you own part of the company, uh, that doesn't resonate with me. I'm like, I don't I don't know what that means. Can I? Do I have say? Can I, can I fire if that guy? If you're a major shareholder. Oh, really? It'd be like, what happens if you owned 1% of the comedy seller? Yeah, I don't know what that means. Do I get money? Yeah. And, and I lose money? Possibly. Okay, well, that, that helps a little. And the better that the comedians do and the better jokes that are being told, the more money you make. If the comedians start bombing and everyone sucks and everyone clears the room, right. you start losing money. Oh, okay, okay. But it's weird that you get all panicky about it because all the things you said are just like comedy. You have no control over it. Uh-huh. You, you do. You can write jokes. You, you can have be no funny. Contro- for sure, but you have no control over the environment. Mm, sure, you can control sure. how much money you put in or take out, but you don't know what the response is going to be, the right. cause and effect. That's true. That's true. But I can go back home, rewrite the joke, <laughs> listen to the joke, tweak it. Fix it. I, yeah, I feel like I have a little – I get to decide what's said up there, you know. So I feel like I have a little more control. I, I see what you're saying, but uh, the business, yeah, I don't know. The whole thing is just – Sounds like, like I could sell you anything. I got oh, a great yeah. investment for you, Mark I Norman. Would it. <laughs> I would totally buy it. Uh, speaking of buying it, you bought real estate. When you think of the real estate market, what comes to mind? Well, that I like because I can see it. It's a building. Yeah. It's a it's unit. Tangible. It's tangible, yeah, and I can okay. live in it too, and, and then I can <laughs> rent it. And, and sure, there's all this jargon with the mortgage guy, and I just go, uh-huh, and I pretend to listen, and he sends me a long email, and I pretend to read it, and I go, yeah, it looks great. I don't know anything it is. You could totally screw me over in the fine print. But uh, that, at least real estate, I, I can see it. I can touch it. Yeah. So that helps. You can touch it. It's tangible. Okay. Yeah. Um, crypto. You said you invest ooh, in crypto. Ooh, you can't touch one. that. What are Scary. your thoughts on crypto, also, Bitcoin? Even more elusive than stocks. It's like it's a coin, but it's not a coin, but it takes up all this memory and Elon <laughs> Musk, and it's uh, out of China. It's a whole culture. Yeah, it has weird names. He's in a turtle deck. It's too much. <laughs> if it was actually a coin, I might get it more. Yeah, but the whole point is that it's not a coin, so I you know. can't get stolen. I know. But you like, you want to touch it like real estate, but you can't. But yeah. you got to talk about it, and it's, you know, it's yeah. got cute little memes and Dogecoin right. and Elon Musk. Right. So, but you're, are you more of a? If you had to pick one to invest in long term, would you be more stock market or more crypto? Probably more stock. Okay. Just because that's, that? it's older, my dad's heard of it, you know. <laughs> Bitcoin is like transgender. I, I pretend to get it, and then I just move on. Gotcha. And well, I give them money. Speaking of crypto and Bitcoin, what are your thoughts on NFTs? Oh, now we're getting even crazier. <laughs> Crazy. It feels like they're just trying to trick me. Yes. You know? well, they probably are, by the way. Yeah, they probably are. And, and NFTs it's are probably the way the ones that could benefit you the most in your comedy. And You think? Yeah. Right? Wouldn't like you agree? the first joke you've ever told, oh, your first tweet. Interesting. Great thought by Amber. Okay, but I feel like NFTs are on artist's side the most that we can. Oh, okay. You can, I can, it's my joke encapsulated as an NFT. And then every time it's sold, I profit off of it as opposed right. to a YouTube video that if you're not monetizing. Okay. Right, right. Adam? Am I learning yeah, things here? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I <laughs> don't buy NFTs in my, is my opinion. Oh, and, and really? Until you've saved money, invested in the stock market, maybe done some real estate and then start buying like Bitcoin or tr- more I'm going to use this word, traditional crypto assets. Yeah. And then maybe an NFT. It's all about asset allocation. Ugh. Right? I know. I, that word you hear, I don't what do you, like what do you think the word asset allocation means? Uh, I don't know. Like Keeping breast implants. Yeah, <laughs> or ass implants. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. What does it mean? Well, I mean, they basically say that everyone should have, these days with crypto, I'll, I'll add this, but asset allocation is like you should have a certain amount in cash, you should have a certain amount in stocks, and a certain amount in bonds. Those, those, are like, fine. those are like the big three. Diversification. I don't want to blow your mind here, Mark. Sure. But that's your different asset allocation. And then within that, so like for me... Let's say I have a million bucks. Let's just say, all right? I've got a hundred grand in cash. Done. Boom. Okay. I've got it like- Liquid. Liquid. Yeah. Liquid. Um, I've got 
let's say a half a million dollars in investments. What what does that mean? All right, so that's 401k, Roth IRA, you know, traditional stock stuff. And then a small sliver in bonds. I'm not a conservative guy, so a little of that. And now let's say I've got, you know, maybe it's a little bit more than half a million. So let's say it's six, seven hundred thousand. So now of the remaining twenty percent, that's where you can kind of get a little spunky. All right, right, maybe some crypto, maybe some Bitcoin, maybe some, you know, Forex trading. But for the majority of people, you should have cash. Yep. You should have the stock market. And then, you know, obviously real estate. Like so for instance, I don't buy real estate. I don't like I don't need to touch it. I get the market, so I don't mm. need to like oh, I don't need to touch it. I'm good. Yeah. I actually like the fact that it's on my fucking phone. I'll take it anywhere I want to go. Mm-hmm. But I, I invest in something called REITs. Do you know what REITs are? No. Oh, yeah. REITs. Yeah, so it stands for Real Estate Investment Trusts. So uh-huh. rather than buying one piece of property, imagine if you owned your whole condominium unit, but just a piece of it, like a stock, uh-huh. but of real estate. Mm. So you can diversify with that. Am I blowing your mind a little bit a right little now? A little bit, yeah. Okay, yeah. well, we could talk. We could sidebar on this. All right, all right. All right this so, is fascinating. So, um, but what's your biggest money lesson for young people out there? Because you've made money, bro. If you're saying you dropped 800 grand on an apartment, you're not like, I don't know. I just yeah. found 800 grand on the floor right. one day. But that money is gone. You know, yes. that's the problem. People well, it's go, not gone. It's in, it's, it's in, real, in estate. A real estate asset. That's a good point. So what's your best advice when it comes to money? Uh, I think I think you should listen to people. You should invest. You should if you don't get it, get someone who does get it. You know, mm-hmm. because if you're not going to figure it out, then then get the help. And uh, yeah, I think buy stuff uh, and listen to people and have a job <laughs> that makes money. Yeah, that's true. So, well, you know, they say to that do something with your money. They, you know, actually, do you know that what your best asset is? Like, what's your number one asset that you that you have? Probably that, you that apartment. Yeah, you're wrong. Oh. You want to know what your number one asset is? My brain? Yes, bro. Your, your ability to make money by telling fucking jokes. All right. Because you could earn 100 grand a year, whatever, a half a million bucks a year, a million bucks a year, and all of a sudden you're 800 grand in a little apartment. Who gives a shit about that? It's your ability to make sure that you can continually make income. That's your number one asset. Ooh. There you go. Ooh, I like that. You are your most important asset, Mark Norman. Wow. Yeah. I wish you were my dad. Yeah. <laughs> well, what were your side hustles son, while you were <laughs> doing that 10 year grind? I did everything. I was a temp, which I hated. I worked as a, uh, what do you call it? A registrar at a school. So I had to kick kids out for being like not attending enough classes. Right. That was a nightmare. Uh, and <laughs> I moved furniture for years. I worked on a construction site. And then uh, the best gig. Janitor. I was going to say, like... Janitor? Yeah. What's the best job for a comedian that's comedy adjacent? But the truth is, anything life is going to help you with your material. So any kind of job, it doesn't really matter. It's not like with an actor, you know, you want to do something like real estate or waitressing because it's in front of people. But comedy... You just need to be somewhere you can observe life happen. Yes. Yeah, well, totally. I, I got it, Matt. You're, you're a fan of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, All great right, That's show. like my favorite show. You ever, you ever seen the episode where Charlie Day, Charlie is the janitor? No. Oh, dude, you got to watch that, I'll especially watch that if you tonight. were a janitor. He's giving kids advice. He's breaking up fights. He's, you know, <laughs> he's telling the principal. All, he goes into the principal's office. Yeah, the kid was real dirty, so I took him to the showers. I gave him a shower. He's like, you gave the kid a shower? What are you doing, Charlie? You know? <laughs> that's well, great. What was it like being a janitor? I loved it because, uh, I mean, sure, you're cleaning up shit. You're, you're pulling a possum out of the uh, uh, ventilation duct and shit. Actually, but, no, yeah, no. well, it was a rat. But yeah, uh, so that part <laughs> sucked. But I, could, I had my headphones in all day. I was thinking about jokes. I was a broke comedian just trying to make it. I would go in the boiler room for lunch and write for an hour every day. That was like my big thing. And, you know, head down, no brain power. Nothing worse than answering the phone, getting yelled at. Hey, one short, one billion dollars short of a billion dollars. <laughs> all that shit. And, the, uh, you know, the elevator and then bullshitting with the other uh, employees is a nightmare. So I think everybody thought I was a heroin addict. Uh, like, why is this kid mopping floors? What's his deal? He must have killed a guy or something. So, I How old were you at alone. the time when you did that? I was probably like 25. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, good-looking white boy, janitor. They're exactly. like, he's clearly doing drugs. Yeah. So uh, It turns out it was. Alone. I was addicted to meth. It was a problem. <laughs> That's funny, dude. Uh, yeah, so what, great gig. Okay. Well, why do you ask that question about j- comedy-adjacent jobs? Well, you said, you know, the best advice is to do a job that makes you money. So obviously comedy is not that for the next 10 years for me. (laughs) So I'm just trying to figure out what I can do that will still 
that will still nurture the comedy brain. Like you said, if you, you need a job that um, doesn't take up too much of the storage in your yes. mind, because mm. all my best jokes are doing like when I'm doing menial tasks and I'm not thinking that's when something comes to me. So right. what for this next 10 year journey, what can I do that to make girl. money that is still going to facilitate the, the dream that I can go out and do the gigs at night? Yeah. I have to wake up early for a nine to five. Cool. You want to keep um, that night free. That's the key. The night has to be free. Yeah. Uh, we've got about a half hour left. Are we going to take calls at the end? Is that calls. Are we, do we have time for calls? Yeah, we do. I okay, have, cool. I'll have to leave the studio, though. Oh, good. No, John, you've been killing it so far. I don't know if we need you to <laughs> leave, on, bro. We need you for diversity. But maybe we'll do calls like around like 3.50, and then we can wrap up right at 4, and then boom, we're going to have a great time. We'll go get drunk. All um, right. Before we transition to more dating type stuff like that, do you have like one comedy, uh, one money joke that comes to mind? I've heard you say something about like um, I don't know. gay people and, and broke people have a lot in common or, uh, uh, yeah. or about like gay, gay, gay people. Uh, is that something that comes to mind? Yeah, gay people uh, and, and poor people have a lot in common. Uh, you know, we're, we're born that way. Uh, our parents are just going to go. You try to tell your parents to go, yeah, we know. 